One of the most often repeated lies that we hear in the mainstream media, but particularly the Western media, is the idea that the coronavirus came from a lab in Wuhan, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and then it uh, managed to escape from there and made its way across the world, causing hundreds of billions of dollars in economic damage, as well as the lives of a significant amount of people. But you see, the, the thing is, we get the talking heads, we get the political commentators, we get uh, the journalists, we get the anchors, we get all those people and government officials with studies that eventually end up saying that they can't identify the source. They can't remember. You remember the U.S. did the, <clears throat> had that intelligence report into the origins of the coronavirus and said they couldn't find any evidence that it actually came from a lab in Wuhan. Yet, despite all of this, we are constantly being fed that this is what happened, that somehow China is responsible for this virus getting out. Well, it's, it's pretty interesting. According to the USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service and uh, Nature Magazine, a multidisciplinary outlet, so it covers a whole bunch of different areas. I mean, this isn't like some natural health thing. This is like an actual scientific journal. I certainly showed it different. That, in fact, one of the strange places where the coronavirus has emerged is inside of white tail dove white-tailed deer. And this is actually very interesting because this is something that we have not seen in the media, though it has come from government scientific services and uh, private scientific services as well. The origin of the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, the virus causing the global wide spread of a coronavirus disease 2019 pandemic, remains a mystery. Current evidence suggests a likely spillover into humans from an animal reservoir. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, APHIS, recently completed a study that analyzed serum samples from free-ranging white-tailed deer for SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. Results of the study indicate that certain white-tailed deer populations in Illinois, Michigan, New York, and Pennsylvania were exposed to SARS-CoV-2. APHIs collected a total of 481 samples between January 2020 and March 2021 from Illinois, Michigan, New York, and Pennsylvania. APHIs detected SARS-CoV-2 antibodies in 33% of those samples. The results varied by state. Another latest article published on August 2nd in the leading scientific journal, Nature, also indicated that one-third of the wild, white-tailed deer living in the northeastern U.S. have antibodies against SARS-CoV-2, showing that they have been infected with SARS-CoV-2 virus. White-tailed deer are very common in North America, and they have been living with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. That is to say, as early as December 2019, the virus had already existed in the bodies of those white-tailed deer. If it was people that transmitted the virus to this white-tailed deer, it means that as early as December 2019, the coronavirus had already existed in those people who had close contact with those white-tailed deer. If it was not due to people, it could be said that before December 2019, the SARS-CoV-2 strain had already existed and been transmitted to the white-tailed deer in some way. In conclusion, whether the white-tailed deer were in contact with people or other animal species or infected by contaminated water, we need to wait for experts to study in depth and to scientifically identify the origin of the virus. If we do not solve this problem in time, a cut off the source of the transmission. More wild animals will be attacked by COVID-19 and hence put people in danger again. Now, this is very significant. 
Okay, th this is real data here. This is real, you know, <laughs> evidence collection. This is real scientific work done by the private and public sector. Yet for some reason, this isn't going out into the public. The public isn't being made aware that this was that this is a thing that's happening. I mean, when you start going like that, it starts becoming very suspicious that the media isn't bringing this up. But instead, we're often reminded about China, 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 China being to blame for everything. But this scientific data or proof or evidence, I'm not a scientist, I can't, I can't say for sure, but this looks like, uh, this is certainly significant information at the very least, is going completely unreported. Don't you think that's a little bit suspicious? I think it's important. I think that if people are going to be informed, they should be given all the information possible so that they can, unfortunately, make up their mind for themselves. I mean, some people, you know, no matter how much scientific proof you give them, they just don't want to listen, i.e. anti-vaxxers. But this is information that people should have and is not being given to us. Not in Canada, not the U.S., not the U.K., not Australia, and as far as I could determine, not even Japan either. So this isn't being fed to us from any angle whatsoever. So I find this all very, very suspicious that we're not getting it, and we should get it. So I think that stuff like this should really be paid attention to, and we got to really start questioning the mainstream media when they're leaving things out. Because remember, the media doesn't even necessarily have to overtly lie. It can turn around and just lie by omission. The coronavirus is certainly very real. It is a real thing that has killed a, a good number of people. And many of us in the West should criticize our leaders for not having done enough and criticize many of our own people for being fools and denying, refusing to get vaccinated and denying it's real, etc. But it's about time we get the real story, the whole story, even the stuff that the media seems to be deliberately leaving out. And all of it specifically to demonize China because, of course, China is a global competitor for the United States. China is a rising power. The U.S. is a declining one. And anything that they can use as a weapon against them politically, diplomatically, economically, etc., they're, they're going to use. So I, I, I really think that this dishonesty is aimed at attacking China on this. When really, this is a scientific matter. One that should be solved scientifically, investigated scientifically, and handled scientifically. Because that's how science works.